he is filled with pure unstoppable rage and he will take over the world. He is the Nether Warden. And this is the story. So, it all begins long, long ago, when a group of adventurers heard about this strange other dimension. It was called the Nether. Now, they had only heard brief stories about the existence of another world out there throughout their lives, and they had always been intrigued by this potential other dimension that really, in their minds, probably didn't even exist. It was fun to think about. However, something changed recently as they learned how to potentially go to this nether, as they recalled. And so, they ventured far, far away from their homes, and they built the portal, just as they were told. And then, they lit it. And it worked. They couldn't believe their eyes. This was a portal. And so without hesitation, they jumped in, excited with the prospect of the adventure before them. They were never seen again. So over time, that portal became lost to time, buried under layers of dirt, and stone, it became nothing more than a mere relic in a dark cave, untouched and forgotten. But eventually, after a very long time, something happened that would change that, as on one snowy day, not too far away, was the greatest implosion that the overworld had ever seen, millions of mutated white skulk blocks all converging into a single point. It was very strange and very few knew what was going on. As in one moment, all the skulk just appeared, and in the next, it was all gone. Well, almost all of it was gone, as one singular skulk vein floated away from all that madness. But that skulk vein was only able to do that, because it was different, as this one had this glowing red thing fused to it. Now, this red thing was very small, but it kept the skulk vein from being absorbed into that implosion, as it made that skulk vein indestructible. But still, it was just a skulk vein, so it was still vulnerable to the mighty forces of wind from that snowstorm. And thus, rather quickly, it would be blown down a small hill and into a tiny cave. Now this cave was also quite special, as this was the very cave where the nether portal lay. And it just so happened to be that right at that moment, the wind was blowing in the right direction to send that vein flying from the cave entrance and right into the centre of that portal. And with that, it was taken to the nether. But as soon as it arrived into the nether, that red part of the skulk vein began to glow and shake before it zoomed off, dragging the skulk vein along with it. It was going fast, very fast, and it was getting faster by the second. It was being pulled in by something, and after a few minutes of constant acceleration, it suddenly halted in mid-air. Before, it shot up into the sky, and travelled through the nether rack on the nether ceiling, and pushed above even the bedrock. And then, while on the nether roof, it began to slowly drift towards something in the distance. Over the next few minutes, as the skulk drew closer to it, it became clearer what that thing in the distance really was. For it was a skulk shrieker that was surrounded by skulk veins, that was then surrounded by red candles, that was then surrounded by skulk sensors and skulk catalysts. It was odd. This clearly was unnatural. Someone, or something, had clearly built this. But as for why, or when, well, that was uncertain. Now, it looked like a ritual site. No, something clearly wasn't right here, but still the skulk vein drew even closer to this artificial build. Until... it was just above the shrieker, at which point the vein dove right into the centre of it, and views a beam of pure power struck from the gods above, right where the vein had just fused. And then everything began to shake and swirl, and then... As it was then, from the bedrock, he rose. The Warden. 
but this was no ordinary warden. No, this was the Nether Warden, being a hundred times more powerful than any normal warden, as he had the powers of a nether infused demigod, as he could fly, cause giant explosions, summon armies of wither minions who would follow his every command, and he was invulnerable to any dangers of the nether. His heart beat in a rhythmic pattern, and he exuded an aura of raw strength, as he was the very embodiment of the power of the nether and the skulk. He was also noticeably red, but this redness was not caused due to the sheer power that coursed through his veins, nor due to the lava that existed within the nether, or just the overall red hue of this dimension. No, he was red as the only emotions that he could comprehend were hate and pure unbridled rage. He was the nether warden. He hated everything. He didn't want to be here. He wanted to be back in the deep dark. Not in this boiling other dimension. His rage was unstoppable. As he stomped and yelled. He hated this. And so in his fit of rage, he punched the bedrock roof with all his might. Causing it to shatter and a crack to open up in the seemingly invincible bedrock. At that point, he jumped through and re-entered the main nether world. At this point, he felt even more rage. What was this world? This was not right. He hated this. And so he stomped and yelled once more, calling out and spreading skulk across this land. Now, this skulk that he exuded, well, it was different as it was red, blood red, and it glowed in an evil hue. Just like the Nether Warden, the Red Skulk itself hated this land, and in fact, the only emotion that it could feel was rage. It needed the deep dark, and so in a fit of rage, the very Skulk blocks yelled and screams. The souls tormented within were angry, and they weren't going to calm down until their master, the Nether Warden, was at peace. Which at this point, didn't seem too likely, as he was just so filled with rage. And so the Nether Warden, with a soul filled with hate and anger, was determined to get back to his homeland, so that he could calm down and hear the normal suffering cries of the skull once more. And thus, he began to angrily fly across the world, constantly on the hereout, for a way back to his home. Now, the Nether Warden's existence was painful fueled by an insatiable desire to return home, as he ventured in all the nether's lands in search for his home. Yet, with each inevitable failed attempt to find his way back, his anger would only grow, boiling like molten lava beneath his obsidian skin. Driven by this incessant rage, the nether warden roamed the infernal expanse, its senses blazing with an otherworldly fire relentlessly searching for a path home. And so periodically, in fits of rage, the Nether Warden unleashed his devastating power upon the land. With a deafening roar that shook the very foundations of the underworld, he would summon forth a cataclysmic explosion, sending shockwaves rippling through the twisted lands of the Nether. But it was not just the force of the explosion that wreaked havoc upon the land. For it was the nether sonic boom that truly proved catastrophic. As the blast reverberated across the barren landscape, it carried with it the essence of the Red Skulk, a sinister force that spread like a plague, corrupting the souls of all it touches, making them too filled with hate and rage. In his unsuccessful journey home, the Nether Warden left only a trail of destruction and pain. Now, after several months of this rampage, he still hadn't found anything. He was still stuck there, in the nether, and the hate within his soul was only growing. But despite the anger that filled his every thought, he somehow gained a new idea, and thus, using his demigod-like powers, he summoned forth an army of withers. These were his minions, and he ordered them to kill every single being that they could find. His 
plan was that if he could get back to the deep dark, he was okay with that. As he was just going to create his own deep dark biome here within the nether. So the withers set to work, decimating the nether life. The raging red skull was growing, absorbing the souls of all life forms that were killed in this massacre. And soon, due to the countless souls collected, the skull had expanded to a point that there was almost a new deep dark biome in the nether. As the skull covered the land, and all that could be heard in this place was rage and anger from the trapped souls. It felt the pure hate that burned within the nether warden, and they reflected that in their cries. This new deep dark world was like no other, and yet the nether warden was not satisfied. He still felt just so much rage, and this fake deep dark biome did little to satiate his hunger. But once again, he knew what he could do to reach peace, as he wanted his wrath to be felt across this entire dimension, and for all life through a part of his network of red skull. In a way, if he could do that, he would become the dictator of the nether. He would be in control. Yes, that was it. If he had that, maybe then the pure rage that burned inside him would cool down. And he could just exist as a normal being. And so he set to work, summoning even more minions and spreading the skunk across the land. Nothing was going to stop him. It would be foolish to even try to stop this beast, as he would just kill any and every life force that he could find. And so he was on a trajectory for his skulk to gain complete control of the nether. Well, that's what we all thought. Remember that strange red thing that fused to the white skulk vein and had traveled the world? The one that had summoned the nether warden? Well, as it turns out, that red thing was actually a shard of an all-powerful demonic relic, and that was the source of the Nether Warden's powers. Well, a group of powerful beings were searching for those crystals, and when they somehow found out that the Nether Warden existed, they knew instantly that he was powered by this relic that they so desired, and thus they set off to go find him and claim what they believed was rightfully theirs. Now, very little is known about this group, and the very few that do ever hear of them usually don't even think they're real, but they are. They're just hiding from all the attention, and they call themselves the Obsidianites. But anyways, this secret group of beings made their way into the nether, and rather quickly, they could sense where the Blood Warden was, as they could feel the crystal heart that powered him. He was calling out to them, but in return, so could the Nether Warden. As the moment that they set foot into this world, a burning sensation filled his heart. That crystal was paining him. He was even more angry now. He didn't understand what was going on. Why was his heart pulsating and paining him? And so he redirected this new anger as spreading the skull even further. But as he did that over the next few days, the pain within his heart was only growing. As they were getting closer and closer and closer, the crystal within the Nether Warden's heart could sense their arrival. But still, as the Nether Warden, seething with unbridled rage and surrounded by swirling red skulk, prepared to unleash his fury once more, the Obsidianites emerged from the shadows, their forms barely discernible amidst the darkness. These shadowy entities, silent and elusive, moved with an eerie grace, their presence a harbinger of impending doom for the Nether Warden. With a deafening roar, the Nether Warden charged forward, its obsidian claws slashing through the air like sights of death. But the Obsidianites were no ordinary foe, for they were masters of stealth and resilience. Their movements quick and unpredictable. As the two opposing forces collided, a whirlwind ensued. The Nether Warden lashed out with ferocious strength, its fiery attacks lighting up the dark depths of the Nether. Yet, the shadowy group is undeterred, leaping effortlessly through the onslaught with unnatural agility. With each strike, the Nether Warden's strength would wane. This one's unstoppable fury 
now faltering in the face of the shadowy obsidian, relentless assault. Despite his best efforts, the Nether Warden found himself cornered, surrounded on all sides by the shadowy entities. In a final attempt to turn the tide, the Nether Warden unleashed his most powerful explosion yet, a blast of searing energy that threatened to consume everything in his path. But even this mighty display of power was not enough. As the smoke cleared, and the echoes of battle faded away, it became clear that the Nether Warden stood on the brink of defeat, and the Obsidianites were about to end this beast when one of them accidentally touched the crystal heart of that monster. Everyone froze in place, no one should ever touch that crystal while it's fused to another entity that was against the law of that demonic relic. And so, the Nether unable to handle the clash of power within its domain, sent these entities far, far away to a land frozen in time. This place was an alpha world. That was odd. But still, this group desired that crystal, as were given the fact that the Nether Warden was on the brink of death, they attacked, and they were able to kill him after just a few more strikes. The crystal fell to the ground at long last. However, as their group ventured towards it and went to pick it up, they were unable to touch it, and then they heard a voice. You are not worthy. The group was now very confused. How were they not worthy? They were the greatest beings that could possibly exist. But then, a portal opened up, and then, a sea fell from the sky. Oh. Maybe that was it, as maybe he would be worthy. They just needed to manipulate him into getting that shot for them. That was easy. They had the power to control minds, and so they all hid from Steve's sight, and were just waiting for him to walk closer to them, so that they could make their moves from the shadows. But while they were waiting, the crystal vanished, and so did that portal. They were trapped here now, as without their crystal, they couldn't get back. And so to learn what happened next, you'll need to watch this video.